Uh, Mitch, uh, I think you said after the Geelong game, round two, that Fags pulled you aside, had a word to you about your form. Can you give us an idea of what at that stage was not going right for you and what's changed since? Um, we just had a, a pretty open, honest conversation. That's I've got that relationship with Fags that we can be honest to each other. And we just had a sit down while we are in uh, lockdown in Melbourne after that game and he just spoke about um, how I'm feeling, how the body feeling. I had a little bit of stuff going off field at that time. So he was just checking in on me and making sure that my head's in the right spot. Um, and we talked about you know, post career and all that kind of, like we talked, had a big conversation about um, how it all looks and it was really refreshing and I got a lot out off my chest and he, he, he talked me through some stuff and I've been playing some good footy since. So he wasn't worried about like, the, the touches I was getting or what was happening. It was more just how I'm going off field, which is why we love him here. Interesting that you mentioned there you were talk, um, talking with him about post career. Yeah. So was he putting it on the line to you there, or were you putting it on the <laughs> line back to him and saying this could be getting close to the end? No, we, yeah, we talked about it. Like, I wasn't saying I'm going to retire or anything. We were just talking about like how you're feeling, has the body in the mind, because I wasn't putting up numbers, but he's just trying to get to the bottom of that and see how it's going. So I'm under no illusion. I'm turning 32 and I'm out of contract. And we're just saying, was that weighing on your mind, or how are you going with it? So that's the thing with Fags. Like we're both Tassie boys. We'll talk about it, be honest with each other, and he's been like that since he's got here, and so have I. So. Um, he's been really good for me in, in my personal development. So did it free you mentally, Mitch? It just kind of gave me an understanding of where I was. Um, and, and from then on, um, it felt like I had a little bit of something to prove again and a little bit of fire in the belly. So I think he was doing that through the pre-season too, just trying to get me to go another level. And um, from round three on, was doing playing some pretty consistent footy. So um, I'm sure he's, he's been under traps for a while. He knows what works for some players and uh, yeah, I think he got me going. So when you kick forward, you go in and ask for a new contract? I've already talked to him, yeah, I've said, I went up to Swanee and said, what's going on, mate? But um, nah, that, that'll happen in due time. If it does, um, it'd be great to get it done sooner or later. But the clubs, you know, they've got such many good young players that are signing up. I'm just lo loving seeing them all commit to the club. And it's great to see for a future, that's for sure. How many more years you reckon you got? To be honest, probably two to three. I think my mind and my body feels as good as I was when I was 21. Um, the way I run around and I'm playing the wing now. I only had three contested positions on the weekend, so I wasn't really crashing bodies and packs and stuff, I was kind of sitting on the outside. So I feel like I'm getting a bit of longevity out of my new role and it, it feels good and I feel like I'm still pretty young. Mitch, you've said um, a few times that wing can't always be defined by how many touches you get. Yeah. So why is that flipped in the last five weeks? Like what's the difference between not getting much of the ball and the last five weeks where you've racked it up? Yeah, I say it all the time, the wing is probably one of the hardest positions on the ground. You can be on the wrong wing for a whole quarter and get no looks at the ball, uh, where you can just get lucky and you get like 10 touches in a quarter. So that ranges a lot. I'll have two in one quarter and then 10 the next and two again, then probably 10 the next. So it's all about the, the footy gods that they look after you and you, all you gotta do is put the hard work in. We see the wingers run up and down all day. Sometimes I don't get it, sometimes I do. So that's just the, the wing role. And luckily enough that I've been getting my hands on it um, in the part in the recent weeks. And um, you know, the footy gods look after you and, and give you four goals every now and then. So that's the... playing on the Stanley Street wing or the Street wing? <laughs> that's the one. We usually, I try and get on the interchange side. So I've got Jackson Pryor right there. So I try and pull the, the older card and say, get on the other side of the wing. But no, nah, he, he's really good. We've got him, Dev Robinson, uh, Matho's come to the team. They're all playing some really good roles for us. So it's... clear up a mystery here, Mitch. Why is so much footy at the Gabba played on the Stanley Street wing? I think the ball bounces higher and it comes out this way. There's a little bit of a lean on the ground. I don't know if you see it from the from the um, bench, but it, it comes down this way. So that's just the way it goes. Years, and I've always wanted to ask that. It's, it's just like, the, yeah, it's, it's the way the Gabba is. It just goes down like yeah. that on that side of the ground, and the ball ends up there that way. So um, after, well, after a performance like that, I know you've been building something up. Performance like that, you, they're talking about you being a marked man come this week. Oh, I, I'll uh, take that with both hands. I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, my game's built on physicality. And I think a few years ago, Sydney put it on me and we didn't react very well to it when they beat us by nearly 100 points in the SCG. And we've grown so much as a team there that it's not about one person. So I, I don't really I haven't thought about that. But if it happens, it happens. It's football. I love that kind of stuff. So um, bring it on. Does it matter where you're playing? Has it been on the team's mind at all? Not, not at all. As soon as, we, as soon as we finished the GWS game, we were pretty excited to play Melbourne. Um, they're top of the ladder. And when you've won seven in a row, you, you, you're trying to look for the play the best teams in the comp. And we get our hands on Melbourne this week, which is going to be great. We don't really mind where it is. We don't know as yet where it is. So I think by the end of the day, we'll probably figure out um, more about that. But to play Melbourne on a Friday night is going to be huge for us. And we can really see where we're at in terms of footy team. And um, all the boys and the coaches are looking very excited for that. Check it. Places available on Friday night? Uh, we would love to have it at the Gabba. We think we've got a great capacity here. But no, if it's Sydney or anywhere else, we don't really care. Um, it's, it's the same for both teams. They get the home game, but it's going to be um, a pretty pretty big game for both clubs, I think. So we're excited. A lot of people are looking at this game and they're seeing the, the Lions over the last six weeks have had the best forward line in the competition. The Ds have had the best defence 
in the competition all season. Do you guys think that that's where this game is going to be won and lost? I think it's going to be a bit of a territory battle. I think we've been second best defence as well. So I think in the past few weeks, so we, we split our um, our stats up in a four week block. So we'll be looking at that and uh, trying to find a trend with them. But I dare say it's going to be one a loss um, in the midfield as well. Um, you know, they've got a stacked team in there and they've got a lot of depth as well. So it's going to be a territory battle regardless. We're going to, like whoever gets the ball going forward is going to have the best opportunity to win the game. So um, I'm sure our forwards are going to be up for the test and our mids and our backs as well. So um, we're, we're not a one-way avenue to goal. Like we've got a lot of uh, goal kickers in our team. I think we had 30 on the weekend, which is pretty hard to stop, so we're looking forward to that challenge. How did uh, Lockie train in there? Trained really well. He's been um, in the club talk, uh, talking up that he's putting his hand up for selection, so he got, look, I think we've got one or two more trainings and he'll uh, put his name up there, but regardless if he plays or not, it's going to be um, the best 23 we put out there and we're excited for that challenge. Yeah. We have, I've let no too, but like, no, he's, um, he, he's been really diligent with his, um, his rehab and stuff, and he's, he's been around helping us out a lot um, in meetings, and so he's not just sitting on the sidelines and not doing anything, he's been um, in the thick of it in there in the meetings, talking up, getting, getting us ready for every game, so um, him coming back in will be huge for us, but also we've got blokes who are playing their role and getting the job done too, which is great. Froggy? Yeah, he trained, he trained today, so he, he's looking good. Um, and I think you know he'll put his hand up as well. Everyone wants to play this week. It's going to be a big game for us. But um, obviously the medical staff are getting paid to do their job, and they'll uh, they'll tell him if they're right to go or not. He's important, isn't he? Froggy Les has he's been one of the most improved players in our team the past couple of years, and um, it goes to show with the, the club giving him faith and signing him on for another couple of years. So he's he's really good for us back there. He said he's a ship. Um, and Darcy going out too was kind of a big blow for us, but. Um, you know, we had Marcus Adams play another good game. He's been really showing his, his true colours in the past few weeks and playing a really good role for us. So um, we don't really rely on too many players and the injuries that we've got. Everyone's, everyone's got injuries in the competition, so we're just kind of trying to get on with it. Crows give you a blueprint and a knock them off? Um, I did watch that game. That was a, that was a, I've been watching my boy Keezy play, so I watched that game. But I think we play a lot different in Adelaide as well, so we're just going to back our, um, our game plan and our structures and our, our process in then. And, if we get that right, we don't care if it's a 60-point win or a one-point win. If we, if we do what we're, we're told to do, I think we've got a good chance to win.